flat, comfortable, thick, and well, maybe just a little bit ugly. That is the trend in shoes coming down the runways and heading into stores. What will be the ultimate impact on our wardrobes and our love life? WSJ on Stockholm is Christina Binkley. She joins us now with her expert analysis. Hey, Chris. Hey, Wendy. So when we say <clears throat> ugly, what do we actually mean in the context of shoes? Tell us, tell us a little bit about the designs <laughs> we're seeing. <laughs> well, ugly is definitely the primary word, and I, I say that with great affection for these styles. Um, if, if you remember the Birkenstock look or, or Bourne shoes, and these are big, flat, wide shoes where you can splay your toes out in all directions. Absolutely the opposite of what dressy shoes for women have been doing forever. I, I'm looking at these shoes. I don't think these are so bad, Chris. I don't know what this says about me and my sense of style, but these are pretty cool looking. And by the way, you're not going to end up having bunion surgery in about 25 years. These are healthy shoes for happy feet. Absolutely. I would say the first time I really sort of honed in on this on this trend was at the Celine Fashion Show in Paris for spring. This was last February. And she sends models out with what looked like fur-lined Birkenstocks. And this is, this is a crew of people who have been for three weeks traveling together in the most god-awful, pinching, tight, high-heeled shoes. Everybody in the room had aching feet. And you just looked at those things. It's like seeing a hamburger when you haven't had meat for a month. <laughs> it was just fabulous. Let's play the uh, name and price game. Let's walk through some of the brands that you've been seeing that are actually uh, the retailers are gravitating toward and that you're seeing the consumers... Uh, 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 shell out the money for as well. You know, this look is not cheap at the high fashion level. High fashion shoes are not cheap. John Battista Valley has them. The Celine ones, by the way, that I saw started out retailing at about $900, and I found them this week on eBay for $1,500. So those were actually an investment for the people who scooped them up when they first came out. Now Marnie is coming out with them. She has a capsule collection for evening wear, and she has several styles with silk bows, and they're bejeweled. Um, again, big, flat, lovely things. Your, your feet will feel as good at the end of the evening as they did at the beginning of the evening, but it's a dressy look. She has them for office wears. Uh, John Batista Valleys were, were uh, studded. They had a little bit tougher of a look. I think they'd be more casual. Victor and Rolf did a look with a silk rope in haute couture. We actually saw these on the runway at Paris haute couture a few weeks ago. So we're seeing them all over the place and I'm told that they're going to come down in price we're going to find them in the, in the Zappos market as well. Chris help me with the logistics of how this works because right now like many people you know I, I will wear heels sort of I'm wearing heels right now for the show I wear that and then when I come off I'll put on something flat to sort of walk around the building so I'm always, it's always like two pairs of shoes I'm juggling during the day am I supposed to just wear these all the time or how am I supposed to be still be swapping out for my heels? Well, you know, th th that's an interesting point. Th these might be a little extreme for some offices. I think the, the Wall Street Journal offices, we tend to be pretty accommodating about various <laughs> styles. I think if you worked at Goldman Sachs, maybe you want to think twice about that. But, you know, what we're really seeing here, this is an extreme version of something that's going on widely, which really is lower heels, more comfortable shoes for women. We are seeing more flats perhaps a little bit daintier at the office. More sandals and more kitten heels or the, the sort of one to one and a half inch heel in the office rather than the three to four inch heels that we were seeing for quite some time. All right, well, maybe worth the investment if you think that, again, foot surgery is going to cost you a lot more down the road. Chris Binkley, thanks so much. Appreciate your being first on that. And uh, we'll read more about it in the Personal Journal section tomorrow.